story of this week's Parsha. In the beginning of this week's Parsha, I should say the Parsha we just read today in the morning, you have the story of Bikurim. What's the story of Bikurim? The story of Bikurim is the first fruit that was brought to the temple. And they say, to the Kayan. Says, when you come to the land, you come to the land that you have settled and you have um, conquered, and you're settled there, then you should take Mereshus Kopri Adam, you should take from the first of your fruit, you should bring it in a tenna, you should bring it in a basket, and you should go to the, to the high priest or the priest, Targum says it's the high priest. And then you, give him, you tell him a whole story. Tell him a whole story. We came to the land that Hashem has promised us. And when Nisa Matthew should say with a loud voice that there was a person whose name was Avram Avinu or Yaakov and he went to Mitzrayim and he became a great nation and then we were enslaved there and then we cried to Hashem and Hashem took us out. He took us out of Egypt. He brought us to the land of milk and honey, etc., etc. And he should be joyous. The basic question is, why the long speech? Why by Bikurim do you have to give the speech? What's so relevant when a person comes to Bikurim? They have to bring these first fruit. All of a sudden, they're giving a speech in a loud voice. And the speech is not, doesn't seem relevant to what you're saying. You're, you're bringing Bikurim from the land that you... So it starts off with Avram, and then we went to Mitzrayim, and then we left Mitzrayim, and we cried. Why only by this mitzvah do you give this speech? That's the first thing. Second of all, and you'll be joyous. What does it mean, Samachta Bechalatoi? So, according to the sages, Samachta Bechalatoi means that you can only bring Bikurim or say, maybe Vikoya, only during the period of Simcha from Atzeres to Chag, from Shulis to, to Sukkot. But simply on a Pshat level, Samachta Bechalatoi means that, that it brings you joy. Why does Bikurim bring a person joy? Are you following these questions? Another strange thing. This is the only mitzvah besides Sumtasim Alech Melech, with the laws of kings, where it talks about Nachla Berishta, that you will inherit the land and settle there. What's the quality of Bikurim that's specifically connected to Nachla Berishta? Do you actually enter the land and you settle there and you're present there? Yeshaftaba. Interestingly, there's 11 verses. In the entire story of Bikurim, and every verse starts with the letter Vav. Vahoya, Velakachta, Ovasa, Velakach, Vanisa, Vayir, Vanitzak, Vitzayna, Vayena, Vata, Vasamachta. Every letter starts with the letter Vav. It's a very prominent letter, is Vav. There's one letter that's missing. What's the letter that's missing? You can't answer that question. The letter that's missing in this Parsha. The Balaturim writes, I'll explain you why I'm telling you this. The Samta Betena, you should put it into a basket. So the Balaturim writes, now Betena, the word Tena is numerically 60. Samach. Remez le Bikurim, this is a Remez, a hint to the laws of Bikurim, which Bikurim, according to the sages, according to the Torah, the Torah doesn't tell us how much you have to bring Bikurim, the Torah doesn't say. You can bring one out of a million fruit, Bikurim. But according to the sages, you have to bring one out of every 60. You have 60 figs, you have to bring one fig for Bikurim. So therefore, the word Tana is 60, Matana. Lekach nelam samach miparshas Bikurim. And therefore, the letter samach does not appear in the laws of Bikurim. There's no letter samach in the word Bikurim. Vav is very prominent. Samach doesn't appear. Now, if you have a little bit a sense of geography or just graphic design, there's a very big, stark difference between the letter Vav and a Samach. A Vav is a line, and a Samach is a circle. Right? There's a measure in the beginning of Parshas Bereshis. Says, a yisker basar tachtena, 
in Perig Bay's chapter 2, verse 21, where it talks about that there was a tardema, a great slumber fell upon man, and Hashem took one of the sides, one at Sela, which is the creation of the female, of Chava. The, the Medrash says, Vayisker, that the Samach is the first time the letter Samach appears in the Torah. Even though, like we mentioned before, it actually appears, Mamash, if you took for it before this, in Perik Bey's Pasigir, Al Hashem Echot Pishain, Hu Asoyvev, which is Samach. But the Medrash says this is the first time Samach appears maybe as, as a prominent. And this is what the Medrash says, this is what, this is what Chazal tells us. Kivan Shenivra Isha, Nivra Satan Ima. Since the woman was created, this is going to sound very terrible, but we have to understand what this means. Since the woman was created, Samach appears now because the woman was created and the Satan was created. Satan was created. But Satan, if you know Hebrew, first of all, is spelled with a sin, now the Samach. So just because it's a sama, that's why Satan was created. And besides, what does it mean that Isha is created? Nivra Satan Ima? So, the kids are very shortly, the idea is like this. We have to understand like this. There's two paradigms, there's two ways of thinking about time. Then the ancient peoples of the world believed in something that's called cyclical time. Cyclical time means, the book of Kehela seems to suggest a similar paradigm, even though at the end it, it rectifies itself, so to speak. But cyclical time means, whatever happened will happen, has already happened. The nature of seasons is cyclical time. It's spring, and then it's summer, and then it's fall, and then it's winter, and then it's the same thing. It's a repetitive behavior. The nature of a cycle is that you're always coming back to the same place. The, the, the concept of cyclical time is that there's no progress, really. There's no movement. You're stuck in a rut. And the rut, it's like the myth, the myth, the myth of Sisyphus, or the great myth, is you have to push this boulder up a mountain, and then when you get the boulder on top of the mountain, it's pushed back down, and you have to do it again. And there's no intention. You're not actually progressing, moving forward, and doing something. You're just repeating the same cycle. You're going to have one year, then you're going to have another year, and then you're going to have another year, and you're really like a, what's that, like a hamster on a, uh, on a hamster wheel. Is that the phrase? Huh? Treadmill. Like a treadmill, a hamster on a treadmill. I don't know if a hamster's going on treadmills, but let's assume. You're basically running on a treadmill. You're running and running and running. You, prog- you think you're progressing, but you're actually just following the exact same cycle every single time. Kivan Shanivra Isha, Nivra Sat and Ima, what the Torah really means, Chazal telling us, is that there's a very fundamental difference between the male and the female, and it doesn't necessarily translate it between Isha and Isha, but generally because males also have feminine aspects and females have men, uh, masculine aspects. But the difference between them is the difference between the letter Vav and the letter Samach. The letter Samach, which incidentally, this is what we call, the Satan, you say this, is a Samach Mem, right? Or Sam Keo. It's the idea of, of Samach Mem, which are both circular closed letters. Samach Mem, Luchas, there were the letters that were closed and completely encircled. This represents a repetitive, constant behavior of, of a circle. The, the woman naturally has cycles. So, Kivan Shanivar Isha, Nivar Satanima means that the concept of a male, I don't want to say a man, the concept of a male is like a line. And a line means that it's, it's moving. There's a beginning, there's a ratios, there's a middle, and there's an end point. And the concept of a circle is cyclical time. So it's linear time versus cyclical time. Linear time means that time began at a certain point. We're at a midpoint, and we're progressing towards an end point. 
the moment we say Beresh is bar lakim, the moment we say that there's a beginning, there's a rashis, that means that there's also a middle and that eventually will become an end. That's why Chazal tell us, on um, the words Beresh is bar lakim, that the world was created for the mitzvahs bikurim. Beschus bikurim, the world is created. What does it mean? Beschus bikurim, the world is created in the merit of bikurim? Because the world, the natural world seems to be cyclical because of the patterns of seasons. What does Bikurim come and tell us? Bikurim says that there's a racious. There's a beginning. There's racious for you. It says the beginning of your, of your fruit, which reminds us that there is a racious. There is a beginning. When the person lives, and this is why it's, it's very important for the idea of tshuva, when a person lives in a consciousness of cyclical life and repetitive behavior, it's hopelessness. There's no progress. You're stuck. Whatever you're going to do, you did already. There's no movement. There's an illusion, maybe a movement. You feel like you're pushing the boulder higher up the mountain, but it's going to fall back down again. And you're stuck in a pattern of behavior. It's just a cycle. It's cycling and cycling and cycling, and you feel like it's quicksand. It's just pulling you down and pulling you down and pulling you down. It's not, you're not moving anywhere. This is the nature of the cycle, of the cyclical time. When the cyclical time, there's no v'samachta, there's no joy. You don't have joy, there's no joy in life. You're sucked out of all joy, you're sucked out of all hope, of any progress, of any hope, of any future, of any dream. Nothing's going to happen tomorrow different than happened yesterday. So the Torah says, when you come to a place of Bikurim, when you come to Eretz Yisrael, Riyur Ashtavi, Shaftabo, when you're in, going into Israel, into the land of Israel, and you're still fighting for the land, you're still in a masculine paradigm, progressing, moving forward, pushing it, going to battle, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. You're moving. You're, fi- you're moving. So, okay, sometimes you move backwards, but at least you're moving. What happens when you're actually shaftable and you finally settle and you're stuck? There's no, there's no joy anymore because you just can get stuck into the cyclical rhythm of time. Whatever happened will happen, and you're just stuck. So there's the idea of Bikurim is the omission of the Samach that we have to take Echon Mesamach, one of 60, and we have to introduce the Vav. So that's why the Vav is prominent and the Samach is completely missing. We have to eliminate the Samach. And that's also relevant to when we talk about Tshuva in our own lives. Tshuva. Chazal say that the word va'ata and now ain't va'ata el tshuva. Tshuva means that there is no cyclical nature to time. Tshuva means tshuva is one of these ideas that it was nivra koydim shnivra oilam. It was created before the world was created. This is what Chazal tells us. What does it mean that it was created before the world created? It means before the concept of cyclical nature, of rhythm of time, of past and present and future, and everything that's repeating itself. There, was that, there is a dimension within creation that allows us to tap into something that's always present, fresh, new. And in the, if you look in Rabbeinu Yoyna, in Yisoyda Tshuva, not in Shari Tshuva, in Yisoyda Tshuva, the foundation of Tshuva, Rabbeinu Yoyna, that says that the foundation of Tshuva is to say that today is the first day of my life, I'm paraphrasing. I have no schusim and no choiva. I have no past merit and I have no past guilt. Today is, my, today is the first moment of my life. And this is, what, this is what tshuva is. Tshuva allows us to break free of the drudgery, of the quiet desperation of life when it seems cyclical, when you feel like you're not moving, you're not growing, you're not doing it. What's the story? When you come in front of the Kohen Gadol, you know what you tell the Kohen Gadol by the Bikurim? You tell him that there was a Ramadayud Avri, and then we went on to Mitzrayim. Why are you telling him the story? Because you're telling yourself that life is a journey. It's a story. And the story never ends until the story ends. But so long as you're able to tell the story, you're still journeying. And even though if, you, if it seems like what happened in the past year seems as a, a complete repetition of what happened last year, it's not true. There's always progress. And the best way we have to describe time is actually that it's spiral. It's not 
cyclical and it's not linear, but it's spiral. We're moving up another rung, touching the same points in the calendar, but for another place. You can't say, okay, Rosh Hashanah again. Okay, we just did this last year. And I don't feel like I'm moving anywhere. A, that's not true. You're always moving. You're always going. You're always forwarding, even though it doesn't feel this way. Life is progressing. There's a racious Bereshis bar lakim. There's a beginning of creation, and there's a beginning of your creation. There's a mid creation story, and there's a destination, which eventually you only achieve after 120. And so long as you're alive, you're still progressing. That's your narrative. That's your story, and we're moving forward. And at any point in this time, we always have the ability to get off the consciousness. I don't want to say actually the literal, the hamster, the hamster wheel, but we're, we don't have to. We don't have. We never on it. But we think we are, because we're just repeating the same patterns of behavior. At any moment, va'ata means I give you the ability and the gift to re-pause, reset the button, and start anew at every moment. That's va'ata. That's the koyach, that's the power of tshuva. The power of tshuva is that ischachas, that renewal that can happen at every moment. That brings us joy. This brings us into the time of Rosh Hashanah. As we're